Hey, welcome back. <clears throat> Haven't done a show in... I think it's been two weeks. Um, I have been sick beyond all words. Um, I guess I'm a little better. But if I don't... Uh, do a show, you know, I'm going to see how, how, if I can do a show, you know. I missed a couple of days of work right before Thanksgiving, and, oh, man, just went out and checked the mail. Every day in the mail, I get, this is the first time I've gotten a pro-Trump one in a while. Usually it's, uh, here's, uh, here's pro Nikki Haley. Here's another pro Nikki Haley. I'm saving all of these. I think someday it'll be an interesting little. Uh, uh, where's this one? This is an anti DeSantis one. I should organize them by. Uh, here, here's a pro Trump one. Good. I like that. Obviously, we're pro Trump here. Another Nikki Haley one. Um. Who would have thought, you know, when we moved here to the Hotel Orloff, that this would be the, um, like a nexus point. I mean, one block, from, half a block from here, uh, what's his face, Ron DeSantis appeared a couple of weeks, Saturdays ago, and uh, Town Square, a couple blocks that way, this, uh, that uh, Mike Pence idiot, uh, was there at the local rest uh, place that serves food type place and then uh, on Wednesday they got a um, what the heck do you call it uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is going to be at the Mexican restaurant that we eat at giving out free food anyway oh, let me show you some stuff um I've been, uh, right before I got sick, I was uh, going through some things left in the garage by the previous owners of the hotel. And uh, you notice, see this door here, the style door. Um, well, there are a bunch of doors in the garage that are this style um, door. So what I think I've discovered are a lot of the original doors that were used in the house that were, um, so that's what I'm hoping to put some of these doors back where they belong. See, um, all these doors were up here. I've been moving all these doors down. See the... So, got a bunch of these doors. Uh, so I've just got to discover where did these doors originally go in the house, and like this door, they used to have the handles much lower than these old doors. But anyway, um, World War I era doors that I would like to reinstall. I think a few of the doors I know belong on the third floor where we're about to go. And uh, some of them, I'm not sure where they go. I was hoping I just don't know. We'll, we'll, I'll have to investigate. <clears throat> anyway, no, I haven't had COVID or anything like that. I just had a real bad flu, and then I got my wife sick with it. So it's just been 
nightmarish. The worst part is when I'm trying to sleep and I've got a fever or something and I guess you call it fever dreams or fever nightmares. Uh, oh, here's another. Uh, is this pro DeSantis? No, it's anti DeSantis. I got a million of these things. Oh, but I got some cool stuff from uh, uh, John Goris. So let's look at that real quick. Well, let's look at it upstairs, actually. Um, So, the last show that I did was pretty unpopular. Even after a couple of weeks, it hasn't even it hasn't even broken 400 views because I didn't show any comic books. And, and I, the you know, last couple of weeks, especially the last few days, I thought I'll entertain myself by watching people talking about comic books on YouTube. <clears throat> And I've heard people, oh man, there are certain people I can trust on YouTube that are, that love comics and are going to talk about their love for comics and, and then therefore I'm going to enjoy their shows. Graphic Man, Captain Strange Life, Charlton 66, um... Meyer Greenblatt, people that I know I'm, I'm not going to wind up getting mad, but I just, man, I know I, I am always stating my opinions on things, and I'm sure pissing people off, talking about slabbing and how I think it's a horrible thing, but it is a horrible thing. So I'm sure people think I'm a jerk for stating my opinions, but <sighs> some of these people on YouTube, I don't know, man, what to say. God, I look horrible. I've got bedhead because I've basically been in bed for... Yeah, well, Thanksgiving just happened, but we didn't have Thanksgiving. I said to my wife, I've got a turkey thawing down there, but uh, let's just, we, we can't cook that. Th we, we, both of us are too sick. So I said, we'll have Thanksgiving. Let's have it like Saturday or Sunday. And, and all, um, honestly, you know, we'll never have it. It's okay. I was thinking... I've got these nostalgic memories of these wonderful Thanksgivings, and um, it's like, boy, Thanksgiving always was great when I was a kid. And then I try to really think about it objectively, and ah! and I don't think it ever was good. I, I think I'm 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 fooling myself. Uh, maybe there were a few times when I was a little kid. But I think I'm remembering more stuff from movies and stuff that I've seen where Thanksgiving seemed to be good. Maybe like an episode of The Munsters or Leave it the Beaver. It never... Uh, I, I don't know, man. Um, you have great Thanksgivings. I, well, that's all more uh, power to you. I imagine a lot of people had miserable Thanksgivings, especially politically, you know. People arguing about the wars we're involved in and who to vote for. It's the last Thanksgiving before the presidential election, which um, will just be another... Uh, uh, something really has... To, uh, I don't even want to talk about that. Let me show you uh, what I got from uh, John Goris, the great animator. Here on, uh, you got to you got to subscribe to his channel. Type in here on YouTube, 
John Goris, J-O-H-N, last name Goris, G-O-R-A-S, and look at his animation. Just keep, let it stream for an hour or two. It is the mo it, it, it will change your life. It's just the most amazing nonstop machine gun fire, skeletons. Uh, it will, all that is wonderful in the world. But uh, he sent this, this card to my wife and, and myself. It says, hey, Kenneth, hey, Cleo and company. I know what you mean about disliking the spirit stores, but I take it from the opposite angle. They make gore and splatter cheap, plastic, and meaningless. Maybe if you had to be 18 plus to enter, it'd have some cachet. Anyway, here's his, look at this thing he sent me. Isn't that beautiful? That's some beautiful art. That's handmade postcard art. And then the one he sent me the time before, there's this uh, excellent Batman illustration, and on the back it says, uh, Hey, Kenneth Cleo and company, I was just thinking I should do an entire sketchbook just with Batman and the other Bat Universe characters. Anyway, I think I already showed this one. Oh, I changed the name of the channel back to Gratu Orloff from the Hotel Orloff because it was just confusing people. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the Cap Captain Kangaroo... People didn't say, oh, look, it's the Captain Kangaroo Show. I'm going to go get an autograph from the Captain Kangaroo Show. Or, or um, hi, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Hey, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Uh, the people could understand. Mr. Rogers is in a TV show called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And then people seem like, oh, I don't know. Should I call it Mr. Rogers or Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? It's like that little, uh, what is that character, Ralph on Star Wars. It's like, I'm a Star Wars, dressed up as Princess Leia for Halloween. I'm a Star Wars. <clears throat> um, anyway, oh man, I, I've just, been, yeah, Thanksgiving. <sighs> yeah, I, I mainly remember by the time I was in junior high or high school, my mom would, you know, we'd find some restaurant that was open on Thanksgiving and it would be crowded and miserable. And then there'd be, oh, later it was, we always go to my brother's uh, wife's uh, family's house and, uh, and they'd make Thanksgiving okay. I guess then we'd have to watch some horrible football. I never like sports. Uh, I, I, I okay. This is what John Gores just sent me. Um, he did this cool thing on the back of the envelope. Let's see what we got here. Look at this. Now, if that almost, like, if if, uh, if I didn't know better, I'd say that's something that I drew. He, he, he's got such a similar artistic vision to me that, I mean, that's just, I've always drawn cartoonish skeletons like that. The only thing is I could never, I would never have been brilliant enough to create that kind of shaded wah. I mean, this is just brilliant. Looks like like original art from an underground comic. Kim Trails. Look at that. I just, uh, a great artist that just sends you, uh, stuff in the original art in the mail. I, I can't even fathom how this is even happening. Just out of nowhere, something will show up to, to cheer me up. There's a, a little Barbie playing card came in the package. <clears throat> how about that? By continuing to not be bedridden, like I, I just been in, in bed um, 
coughing and coughing and forcing myself to be actually upright and like I am now I'm not coughing look at this now those talking about coughing is making me want to cough which means that it's all in my mind This is, uh, these are like memory cards from like a funeral home that, that he has. <clears throat> so, uh, This is a sticker. Um, Yeah, I've been watching these people on, on YouTube talk about comic books and um, people say things like, uh, um, you know, I really enjoy buying these obscure superheroes like Captain Marvel Jr. and, and Captain Midnight. Exactly at what point did they become obscure heroes? Those are... Those are big time, you know, things like that. And should I let it get me mad? Should I, it's just like, I guess I'm mad at myself that I'm wasting my time watching people. Um, it's just like they say, you know, you can become rich and it doesn't buy class, you know, or, but, but you can also, uh, have a lot of money and buy a lot of golden age comics and stuff and it doesn't mean you really know <clears throat> the uh, doesn't mean you really know anything about anything Yeah, I was listening to people saying Wally Wood wasn't a very good artist. Oh, boy. This is something that's been in the closet since I was like in fifth or sixth grade. It just sat there in the closet. And my mother passed away, and I could have thrown this away, you know. But it's like, what is this, from the maybe late 70s? It's got a UPC code. How much did this cost, man? $1.30. Anyway, is this collectible yet? <clears throat> the 
as soon as someone pulls out a slab on their YouTube, uh, th I immediately turn it off. It shows me that they have no class, that they don't really appreciate comics. Not like, that's not the way I look at the world, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, let's see what's here. You know, did, um, have you heard this new Beatles, supposedly a new Beatles song? It's, it's, it's really not any good. I mean, if, if John Lennon wanted to do something with that song, don't you think he would have done it? Um. Look, it's amazing detective cases. Oh, God. <clears throat> so how are you guys doing, man? Um... So, uh, it's amazing when people cough on you, you get sick. Uh, who would have thought that would happen? I was watching Dr. Silverage this morning showing his Doom Patrol books, and I was like, I uh, wanted to see uh, how close am I to having all the Doom Patrol books? Because that's something I was really trying to do in the 80s, is get Doom Patrol. I had this uh, friend um, that was into these stupid... Uh, who, who did those books? Grant Morrison? Um, shit. Um, They were really badly drawn books for, like, art school uh, morons. Uh, they were new Doom Patrol books. And I told my friend, why are you buying these books when you can get these 1960s original Doom Patrol books that are great and they're not ex that expensive compared to other books from that time period? And this would have been the late 80s, early probably late 80s yeah early yeah late 80s I think that's when that was and he said I like just I, I like these and I said why man this stuff is so much better and it's just as weird but it's 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 uh, as good as anything Marvel was doing he just wouldn't listen Him and his stupid OTO friends and um Yeah, I guess so. So um there's a fake my greatest adventure number eighty first appearance of the Doom Patrol. 
Now on a few days on Tuesday, they're going to have a fake um, Doom Patrol with the first Beast Boy. <clears throat> um, so that was number 80. So the first real one I have That's, uh, man, I can't even make that out. I think it's 82. So I need an 83. There's 84. I'm just looking, I'm making an inventory so I can maybe get some of these ones I'm missing because that's something I, I, I should have a complete Doom Patrol. I should have gotten them in the 80s. Um, 86. I mean, I thought these were expensive and they kind of a little expensive, but they really weren't. I mean, because I was able to buy them. Um, here's 87. I miss doing live streams. Maybe I should do one. I, I don't know. Here in a minute. This is uh, 89. I guess I have more than these than I realized. More of these than I realized, huh? Yeah, actually, I have a pretty good set of these. 90. I would only need a few to have a complete set. And I think that was uh, 91. So I'm missing 92 and 93. Here's 94. I really had so much fun reading these. Um, they. It really reads well. Um, it really reads as well as any um, uh, Marvel from the time period. Also kind of looking at at the condition these books are in. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, today it's 31 degrees outside and that's supposed to snow. What was that one? Man, I do have a lot of these, actually. That's 97. Here's 98. What number is this? What? 98. Oh, these are out of that's out of order. Why was this out of order? Here's 99. This is the one they're reprinting, doing the facsimile. It'll it, it's your comic stores already have them, but they're not allowed to sell them until Tuesday. A lot of comic stores don't sell the them until Wednesday though. Ooh, this book is. Uh, Yeah, the, looks like the staples are barely holding on there. Okay, so that's 99. Yeah, I think I'll get that fake, fake facsimile one. 
um, 99. I think this is 101, so I need a 100. There's 102. One oh three, one oh four, no, no. One oh five. When I get sick with the flu or whatever the heck this crud is, I will cough for months. Um, it seems like months after I'm, I get better. Six. That's 106. 107. <clears throat> Okay, here's 108, and then it looks like I've got another copy of this one. <clears throat> We're getting towards the end of the run. That was 108, right? This is 110. So, uh, wait, what? These aren't in the right order. This is 109, and I just showed you 110. How do these get all out of order like this? There's 112. This outstanding ad on the back. Maybe we'll go uh, look at some books in the other room here in a minute. One seventeen. I really just need to get a few, and then I'll have this complete set. Um, this always looked to me like they used the Barbara Steele photo as a reference for this cover. I could be wrong. A lot of significant birthdays last few days. Uh, it was Boris Karloff's birthday, and then it was Forrest J. Ackerman's birthday, and I thought, well, I'll do a show and honor them, but, <clears throat> and I, uh, I didn't because I wasn't feeling well enough, and then, um, um, on Thanksgiving, on Thursday, Graphic Man had a live stream with his friend that collects monster stuff. I wish I had been well enough to go on there, but um, I wasn't. 
So I missed meeting him. Um, so these things. Um, yeah, I never went to the Forrest J. Ackerman's museum to tourist, you know, his house where he has a museum. Um, a friend of mine did several times because he lived in Los Angeles. Um, he had some interesting stories that I won't. Sometime if I talk to you on the phone, I'll tell you some of the stories. But, uh, <coughs> I had, uh, I appreciate Meyer Greenblatt contacting me and Gary Von Davis, several other people have contacted me about seeing how I'm doing and stuff, and I appreciate that. Um, Charlton66 contacts me all the time on, uh, on Instagram and stuff, and I appreciate that too. So... So here we are in another room. Let's find a place to put you guys down. Um, I'll show you some books. Um, I tried showing you books and D DVDs last time, and no one, no one gave up. Yeah, blank. Um, the show was, was not very popular. Maybe it's just my attitude. I, I just, you know, when you don't do a show on YouTube for a couple of weeks, you start realizing, ah, oh, what a relief. Because right, you start feeling like, oh, i got to do a show. People are counting on me. And you know, no one's, few people enjoy your show because it makes them feel better and makes them laugh. There's a few people like that, and that's great. And you do the, sh you start realizing, well, there's a couple hundred people that really do care and watch the show, and just accept that you're never gonna be comic book Tom or something. But uh, um, okay, this was an uh, attempt to. Random house to so weird that in the 1990s kind of became mainstream and saw this stuff like at maybe book fairs, you know, in, in elementary schools, or just you know, and you order books from your elementary school teacher that you know, like new EC art because of the HBO series, you know, which. Hmm. Here's uh, the mad morality of the Ten Commandments revisited. It basically shows that Mad Magazine teaches them teaches morality. Uh, it, it was put out by some. I mean, it has a lot of. Uh, Man, can you see it? Can you see anything? Is it's um I'm trying to find a place to put the camera where you can actually see. Um there's not enough light in here. Um It has all the Ten Commandments, and then it has how mad, I guess, reinforces the Ten Commandments. It's uh, put up by a, by a religious company. Um, 
1970. But I don't have my glasses on. I can't tell you the name. A oh, Abing Abingdon Press. Yeah, this book. I got tons of mad books. Um. <coughs> Here's a... Uh, this is from Dark Horse. It reprints the Charlton Comics Tarzan books because they thought that Tarzan was in public domain and he wasn't. And so they started doing adaptations of Tarzan for uh, Charlton Comics until they were told they do not have permission to do it and they stopped. But in the meantime, they turned out some really good adaptations that are uh, that so they've been reprinted in this book back a few years ago <clears throat> how about that um, here's a book Crossed and Dunlap and uh 70s put out this collection of uh, pulp reprints of the shadow because uh, no, it was 1966 actually the time of uh, Batman because it's been like 30 years and so um kids that were 10 uh, or 15 years old when the shadow was coming out in newsstands and was playing on the radio and as a, as a movie serial character in the movie theaters, uh, well, they were um, in their 40s in 1966 and were, you know, um, open to nostalgia for their childhood here's a British album collection of the Jim Stranko uh, uh, Captain America stuff they uh, they have the open the first page kind of cut like a uh, Kind of like they used to do with uh, record albums, uh, cutouts, you know. And this is uh, Simon and Kirby's Fighting American. This is, uh, when this came out, it was $36. And that was in the, man, that was a long time ago. I think it was in the 80s. I think Greg Theakston was behind this one. Um, now when they don't have the original artwork and, and they need to uh, reprint it for these books, the PS art books and everything, they'll, they'll just shoot it from the original uh, uh, surviving copies of the comic book and uh, maybe clean it up a little bit digitally, but let me see if I'm wrong, if this is Greg Theakston. Yeah. Greg Theakston, Art and Color Restoration on Selected Features. See what they would do. Uh, Greg Theakston came up a way, uh, with a way to get basically a facsimile of the original art so he could uh, put out these deluxe editions, and that might be partly why it was so expensive to get these books back then, $36. Um, he had to get actual an actual original copy of, of these comic books, and he'd have to destroy them. He'd have to soak them in chemicals and uh, bleach all the color out 
so it leaves only the black and white line art like like an original piece of artwork would be and then that was reproduced then they added the color and then that therefore it would you would have this brilliant reproduction this doesn't the, the new books that come out ps art books look more like you're looking at an old original comic book which is cool what he was trying to do of course now that was all before um uh, you know he was doing what he had to do what what he um doing his best you know uh man There's rockets and jets, guided missiles and spaceships. Uh, man, uh, man, there's just not enough light in here, is there? There's uh, Seduction of the Innocent. Cost four dollars back then. A lot of the <clears throat> some of these books have had the artwork um, all exacto bladed out. Um, some of the comic book companies would send some of their employees to the bookstores with exacto blades to cut the artwork out so that people, uh, the mothers that bought these books, would, uh, would not get that full experience. There's the EC Comics uh, foul play where they're playing uh, baseball with a guy's head and the bat is his leg and uh, they have the intestines trailing. Um, these are the bases not a very good condition copy but this is one of those books that you kind of need in your collection it's kind of um, did a lot of uh, reports in high school and college using that as a source because I would always uh, do uh, reports about the comic book controversy of the 1950s because it was something I knew a lot about and it would be real easy for me to write a report on it and I had lots of reference material that I could use and sources so I, I anyway this is uh, one of those books that came out in the 60s I think this came out did it come out in 65 or in 66 from Dick Lupoff and Don Thompson Man, it says 1970. Okay, I'm get I'm wrong. Uh, man, I thought this was earlier. I think I'm thinking of the co the great comic book heroes. That was the 1965 one. This has a lot of essays about comics in it. Um, and then there was a sequel to this book called. Um, the comic book book same authors um, 1977 this is a Brazilian version of Frankenstein that would be a fun thing to own Mainly I'm doing a show right now, just I'm trying to test myself to see how long I can go without coughing. Can I appear to be not sick? Um, 
Here's a whole thick book about Will Elder. The mad playboy of art. Will Elder, one of my fav favorite artists. Wow. Now there's a picture of Seduction of the Innocent. Let's go look at comics in the other room. <clears throat> I guess. Uh. <clears throat> no. We should go see if it's snowing yet. Oh, here's some challengers of the unknown. Here's number 42. Here's another copy. Man, that was only $4. Pretty good deal. Can't even get a new comic for for that, I don't think. Uh, hold on. Let me uh I'm gonna log into my uh laptop here for the first time in a few weeks. Maybe I, maybe I should try doing a live stream here. Maybe this is the only way I could force myself into getting better. It's actually forcing myself to um, do things, man. Um, right now it's 12.31 p.m. on uh, November 25th, 2023. Um, I'm telling you, man, I've been so sick. And... starting a live stream here.
Let's see what I should call this episode. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight. And then one day I during during the sickness, I just went and bought all this food and just started stuffing myself. And I think I gained it all back. Um they say what starve a fever, feed a cold, is that the cliche? Okay, I gotta find a thumbnail picture for this uh, broadcast. That's the thing. I just don't have anything to show you guys, man. There's just nothing interesting that I have to say. There's nothing I have to show you. I'm not buying any new comic. I mean, I, I need to, but I... Um, I everyone else seems to be doing fantastically financially. I, I watch everybody's always got these new comics to show. Uh, um, so you guys are doing great. Yeah, it's fantastic. picture of Batman. I'll put that up. Let's see. All right, let's see. We'll hit, uh, for studio entering the studio enter studio
Well, I guess I should end this episode to do this one, so. Um, you know, um, I guess I'll see you guys soon. Because when, uh, because when you wake up and the day is new, you know, I'll have, I'll have some more ideas for you. Some ideas for you. And, uh, we'll have things we'll want to talk about. I'll have things, uh, and so will you. So, uh, God damn you son of a bitch. Ah, God damn. She was chewing on this book, man. Okay, yeah, right, whatever.